Our next topic is how to swing and turn, but it could be better stated as how to pass your partner and how to get around the room almost without turning. So let me just show you what I mean by that. To advance down the floor, all we really need to do is open our legs and change weight to get down the floor. However, that's not particularly beautiful. It looks a lot better when I go past my partner and then she goes past me. I go past my partner, then she goes past me. She goes past me, then I go past her. So basically, we are constantly changing places as we get closer to the floor. Now, little kids do this without thinking. They go around each other like this, and then somebody stops, and then they throw the other partner. This is really kind of what we're doing. We're really just playing when we dance, like we were when we were three years old. But we have to know how to do it so it looks good and stays to the music. Basically, what's happening is one partner is allowing the other partner to pass. When turning, we turn as a couple or change places, we change alignments on the floor. We don't turn within ourselves because that's just a major disconnect. And this is one of the major problems in dancing that we are aware of our own body, but not about how our body relates towards our partner. So the frame becomes very, very important. So I want to make sure that I connect my hand on, with Janelle's hands and I want to make the connection with my right hand on her upper back and her upper arm and we're going to stay in this kind of circular position with our bodies facing one another. On the left turn, we both relocate our feet to new positions on the floor. We have turned as a couple, but we have not turned individually. Now this goes back to the principle of inside and outside of turn. The person who's moving backwards allows their partner to pass. The person who's moving forward does the passing. So the person who's moving forward moves straighter longer. The person who's moving backwards has a feeling of rotating earlier to stay on the inside of the turn. So Janelle is allowing me to pass by turning a little bit earlier while still facing me, and I move straighter. And then I'm allowing her to pass by turning earlier and allowing her to move straighter longer. This is inside and outside of turn. Very important that we did that to the left and we can also do that to the right. She's allowing me to pass. I'm allowing her to pass. And when we say pass, we mean getting closer to the other end of the ballroom. We move parallel to the walls of the room in a counterclockwise direction. So we keep flipping position. This is not that we're turning our body in and of itself in its own space. So I don't turn within my own space. As a couple, we reposition the feet along the floor whilst still facing one another. Janelle, did you have something to say about that? Well. I could go into how the lady stays in the arm and allows you to pass. That would be perfect. <laughs> okay, let's take it from promenade. Maybe we'll go towards the camera. We'll do the twinkle. And what happens generally here is I know that I need to get on my leg. I know I need to move. But also I know that my partner has to pass me. So when I move, I'm going to move from my bottom, from the base. I'm going to send my legs and thighs but I'm gonna keep my head back and in his arm. And now it's my turn to pass. So I'm still taking my legs and thighs, get to promenade again. And it's important that I don't go with my upper body, but I do go with the lower body so that I can get past him without coming out of the arm. Okay, excellent. Now no discussion of the silver or intermediate level would be complete without the twinkle to promenade or the open promenade and the open right turn and the open impetus turn. This is the mainstay of the work from this moment forward in your dancing. So we're gonna talk about this because this is the most complicated group of figures at the, at the intermediate level. The twinkle to promenade. We start in a diagonal position. I dance forward between the lady's feet and I turn to the promenade position. I dance across, I dance to the side, and dance back. 
Allowing the lady to pass me, I close my feet, again ending in a promenade position, and then we will finish it with the continuity finish, which gets us back to closed position. This is very important, and this is where all the problems seem to arise in our teaching when we look at couples. Promenade can be defined as both of the partners moving forward towards the joined hands. That's basically what's happening. And the history of that is that it comes from the conversation step, where we would be dancing together and the man would be talking to the lady as he moved. That implied that he was turned towards her, not away from her having a conversation. But modern day promenade problems seem to be the guy seems to turn away and leave the lady in his hip pocket. We're going to, we're going to get a bit retro now and go back to the origins of the step. My body will be turning towards my partner even though I'm stepping forward. My head will be facing where I'm going towards my toe, nose over toes is my alignment, but my body will stay towards. This will solve the major problem of the man's right shoulder crossing in front of the lady's face. And the girls in my studio tend to bite that shoulder when it gets in the way. So guys, beware. Turn the body towards your partner as you're moving across, even though you're stepping forward and you will pass her comfortably. So promenade, as I like to define it, is sideways movement, of the spine with a rightward turn of the body. Sideways movement of the spine with a rightward turn of the body. Then I can put my nose and toes where I'm going. It doesn't much matter at this point. This is just leg tracking, but my torso is turned towards my partner. Now using that definition, we will go to promenade position. The twinkle, just by myself first. The twinkle goes forward on the left, I like to say forward on the right because I'm dancing between my lady's feet. So let's just say between her feet on the ball of the foot. I have a rightward turn of my body as I step to the side. Now Janelle's left foot is the axis of the rotation. I will go past it, which will indicate to her that she's to turn to the right in a promenade position. So I step forward between her feet on step two, turning my body to the right, and then move to the side in a promenade position. Now my spine is more advanced towards the end of the room than Janelle's, so we're still passing or turning, getting down the floor. Again with the twinkle to promenade, and I always, guys, leave my hands towards the girl. My, my hands are on her back and shoulders. They're here. She doesn't suddenly get bigger as I decide I'm going to go to promenade. So here's the common problem. Separate the arms. Now suddenly the girl that was this size became this size? I don't think so. So a good practice, guys, you could just put a stick in your hand. Like I had a little stick that I danced around with for years that I kept two little ribbons attached to with little weights. Where I move that, my hands is where the stick went. The, the, the little ribbons indicated where the lady's legs were hanging. And I really shocked myself when I realized sometimes what I was asking the girl to do. I mean, she was wrapped clear around my body. But now, I'm much better than that now. So I keep my hands on her frame as I move myself to where I'm going next, which opens up that whole discussion of lead and follow anyways, which we'll get to later. But that's your promenade. Sideways movement with rightward turn while Janelle stands on her left foot, on the ball of her left foot, and I go past, it indicates to her that she's to dance in a promenade position. Then we can dance across our body. Now this is where we worked on collecting the feet. I'm across, I'm not pushing my right side forward in any way. In fact, I could say that I never feel forward energy through the right side of my body, because that's where the girl is. If I start pushing that there, she's gonna get real defensive. So I always feel that my right side has a feeling of pulling back into my own body. So here's a great example of that. I'm standing on my left foot, bringing my right leg across, my right side is staying back. I dance across her path. Again, using the principle that my head 
and hand is moving to the left. I'm not going to sway into her path, which is a common mistake. The guys start swaying and looking to the right. And, I've, and I'll do it on this angle so you can see it because this is a real enlightening kind of thing. I sway across her. Now where is she going to move? No place for her. So I'm going to stay head to the left to allow her to swing past me. Now being a courteous dance partner, I'm on the back half of the turn. I'm going to allow Janelle to step past me as I close my feet and end in promenade position. Now this is an easy promenade from the impetus turn because my right side is already traveling back. This is the easiest one. And we'll get back to how the girl dances her back next. Now the promenade position that we talked about, I spoke primarily relative to what the man has to do. But the lady has her own action within her own body that makes this even possible. And I'll let, of course, Janelle talk about this because she's better equipped. Well, let's start. Let me, let me uh, borrow you for a minute. We're going to do the twinkle, but let's do it towards the camera so that they can see. First of all, as lady, I need to stay in the arm. That's my first and foremost objective. So when he, whoops, sorry. When he does his twinkle, you'll notice his arm. Go ahead and do the twinkle that his arm is over here. So that's where my head has to go. But I still have to face him. So I don't want to end up open in this manner. So as we do that again, I will take my head towards his elbow and my back, even though my feet and my intention is to turn to the right, my back is turning to the left. So I'm actually turning in two directions at once. I'm sort of torquing my body. My upper body is turning to the left, my feet are turning to the right, and my head is turning to the right. So that's helping me to stay with Jim. I'm facing him. My feet are ready to go in promenade position. Then when we get to the open impetus turn, have a similar thing going on. I step forward and I swing to my two. And at this point, I will not turn my upper body anymore. My lower body will turn and my head will turn. But I'm keeping my back facing the man. So in some sense, my back is very active, constantly turning it and turning it. So I've got on the twinkle, one, two. This is an exaggeration. I'm exaggerating just so you could see it. But I'm turning it this way. When I go to the open right turn, one, two, I'm turning it again the other way. When I get to the impetus turn, I have one, two, it turns the other way. When I do the continuity ending, one, two, I need to turn my back again. From there, I would just leave it that way for the left turn. So if we dance that together, you won't hardly even be able to see it except that I told you about it. So my back, is actively working on every one of these steps. So I'm swinging and turning my back. While still on the topic of swings and turns, we want to talk about the underarm turn from an open position. This is an important figure because it requires the lady to learn to pass the man and create turn and allows the man to start to understand more how he dances on the inside of turn and it'll allow us to practice reconnecting. Here's how the figure goes. We start from a twinkle to promenade. The man moves across the lady and then she does a syncopated underarm turn while we chasse. There is a lot, and we can reconnect from an, oh, an outside twinkle there too. I'll just add that while we're talking about it. But there's a lot of stuff going on there. There's the chasse action. There's the passing of the lady passing the man, which is man on the inside of the turn, lady on the outside. And then there's the uh, reconnection phase where we're not rushing to reconnect. But I'll let Janelle talk about the underarm turn since she's the one doing most of the work here. Okay. So, first of all, we dance the twinkle. I realize he's going to do it because he opens early. And as he does, I'm, I'm opening the arm. And even though I want to have a shape that's back, I'm not going to actually go back. That would be a negative p direction to go. I want to go in a positive direction. I'm going to move forward, forward of the foot that I'm standing on. And I need to get past him. So I will go past, then make the turn on the other side, as opposed to 
turning right away. Now I haven't made it past him, and he has no way of collecting me back again for the next twinkle. So I'm going to move past, then turn on the other side. And in doing that, one more thing, <laughs> I'm bringing my left side around during the turn, but I don't bring it around on the first step. I take the first step open, let's say, and then I bring my left side around, and that gets me past him. Now this figure could be used in the uh, foxtrot, in the waltz, and at a very high level, we even do it in the Viennese waltz. And so we use different timings, but we go quick in either case. I'll just use waltz timing for the moment. One, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, and three. Now while the, this really, really exemplifies inside and outside of turn, because Janelle is going past me, she's forward on the outside of the turn. Although she's spinning, she is progressing. She's really going past me. I'm being a courteous partner, and guys, sometimes we don't do this, but I'm allowing her to pass by A, beginning my rotation early, clearing space by moving back through the frontal plane of my body rather than back through the back of my body through my shoulders, which opens up a whole other can of worms, but I'm moving back through the front of my body, creating space, and I'm dancing a closed foot position chasse, which enables her to get past me. So I'm being a courteous partner. I'm utilizing the principle of inside and outside of turn by rotating early, allowing her to pass by keeping my steps more compact, and allowing her to pass comfortably. Janelle is practicing outside of turn by, although spinning, she's moving strongly down the floor for one, two, and three. If we were using foxtrot timing, we would generally dance it slow, quick, and quick. Slow, quick, and quick. Same steps, same action, same rise and fall, everything the same. And that also kind of goes along with our thing we were talking about earlier, swinging on a straight line if you're going forward. So a lot of times I see ladies go like this and drift off, and the man always has to go and catch him, which is, is uncomfortable and drives you off of the line that you want to dance on. So ladies, we want to go straight ahead, right down the line. I'm going straight, straight on the line, straight on the line, and straight on the line. Now, guys, you will invite the lady to dance straight on line. We're going to go straight at you now. We're going to use this center seam of the floor as our line of dance. So if I started in my open right turn to here, it's almost as though I've blocked Janelle. So I, at the end of step one, which is my left foot going back, I have to open my right side, giving her plenty of space and a big invitation to move. Again, we're back to the whole lead and follow thing. I invite her or I set up the potential for her to move by creating space. Then she takes that opportunity either to fill it, if she read what I asked her to do, or she doesn't. And then I've got to reassess what I've done and do something new. But in this case, I think she's, since we've talked about it enough, she's going to do that. I'm going to open space for her and she's going to fill it. The next figure we're going to discuss is the promenade pivot. Now, if there's one step that I've been asked more about, it's this step by far more than any other. And now you can dance it in waltz, you can dance it in foxtrot, you can dance it in tango, and you can dance it even in the Viennese waltz. And if you're in your standard, you can dance it in the quick step. So every ballroom dance, and you can do it in the rumba and the cha-cha and the swing and the mambo and the bolero as well. So all the dances require pivoting actions. But we're going to talk about it at the moment in the waltz or foxtrot because that's kind of what we've been doing so far. What's important to notice is that we're using the principle of how to get to promenade, by turning to the right as we move sideways, inside and outside of turn, because someone's going back allowing their partner to pass, we are centering, which keeping our bodies facing one another, we're using our body weight to create the potential for one of us to pass using body weight, and we're also using the pressure of our knees and our weight through bending and sending to create power across the floor. So we're utilizing a lot of the principles we've talked about uh, to create now this pivoting action. So I'm just going to dance one for you first. We're going to dance our twinkle to promenade. One, two, 
three. Notice how I moved my spine down the line, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, ending in promenade position. Now, when we dance these pivots, the first thing that I notice off, notice right off when I look at people, is their arms do this. They tip. We want to dance this parallel to the floor. Now, if I had a heavy weight in my hand, and I did, I walked straight, I would angle slightly against that weight, but the force I experience when I rotate, that weight is more than when it's just standing here neutral. So the centripetal or centrifugal force that we're talking about forces me to angle my body even more, and that's what makes the top look bigger. However, the more I angle to the left, the more parallel to the floor I retain. So my angle looks bigger, or smaller, depending on what side of the arm you're talking about, but my, but my arms are level, and Janelle does the same thing. She increases the space, but the arms remain level as we're rotating. So if you tip, you're gonna have problems right away. So, you know, just, just one yeah, thing sorry. I want them to notice that you, well, you're just about to say tip, so I'll, I'll let you talk about that. But what, what you'll notice is that he did it with his legs. His legs created that, not the tips, which is what you're gonna talk about. Yeah, so I can, I angle, I create more space by angling my spine, by dropping my weight into my knee more, and, and Ang and turning my body towards her as I angle away. So I didn't turn my body away from her to get that force. I turned my body towards her. Now these are the common mistakes we see. So what, now how does this whole thing work? Well, we produce an axis by the person who's moving backwards, which in the first part is me, an axis, a vertical axis of rotation. My shoulder, my knee, and the ball of my foot produce a vertical axis. Now I'm spinning on that. It is stationary while Janelle is going past me. She goes forward past me using the power of her legs and I put my back to the inside of the turn to allow her to turn past me. Then she does the same for me. She has an axis of rotation that is her shoulder, rib, knee, and, and foot, and I go past it. Now, while we do that, we aren't turning individually. We are relocating our feet in positions that go down the floor relative to the room. But to our partners, we're still facing one another. So I'm neither turning away from my partner or turning extra towards my partner, trying to pivot her, which just ends up a pull in the, into the lady's arm. So as I go to my left side, I anchor, I keep facing my girl, she goes past me, I go past her, and we'll rip down the floor with no problem. That is all done with weight, not done with muscular effort. When we want to exit, guys, so I told you how to go fast, now I gotta tell you how to stop. When we want to exit, guys, we just drop our weight closer to the floor, let our knees stay under our body, and then we elevate slowly. By anchoring down and closing our feet, I stop her from continually progressing down the floor and notice how I let her rise as I then anchored and then followed her up. If I rise at the same time as her, too much weight. So again, envision throwing the bag, the heavy bag around in a circle. If you, if you angled your body down, the bag would be up here. This is what I'm doing with Janelle at the end. I'm letting her rise and I just follow her up and a nice gentle ending. All right, good luck with that.